Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Sim Racing Academy. We are having another driving instructor lesson together with Stan Donnit. And uh, when you guys are watching these, you guys will say, okay, that rings a bell in my ear. Yes, exactly, because Stan Donnit had one of these sessions with me at the Daytona 24 towards the endurance race. And uh, actually that was a pretty interesting session for me and uh, also Stan took a lot from it and did keep on the work afterwards so uh, that was big improvement and we gonna tell you about that improvement and what it has done to his Daytona 24 appearance and uh, we're going to tell you that in a case of success so it's going to be a Patreon post on my Patreon page uh, coming up tomorrow um, at this time, so uh, stay tuned, check out the links in the description to find the Patreon page and see what Stan Donnit did last time after um, we had the coaching and uh, after he himself said uh, that was all due to the improvement being done on the coaching. So we're back, we are at Sebring this time and we're practicing already for the 12 hours race of Sebring with the Simpit, Rigmotech and Durance team 2019. And I'm very happy to welcome Stan once again here. Hey Stan, how are you doing? Fine, how are you? I'm fine as well, thank you very much indeed. So, um, I'm going to start spotting and go and check your driving today once again. And hopefully um, get a good time into the sim. Let's see. I'm going to pick your... Our car basically, and you just basically drive out, and uh, we're gonna have some fun all together. All right, so sounds if you good. Want, you can go out and warm yourself up. Right, so Sebring, here we go. Um, what I'm using today as a tool um, in order to check out how the car operates, in order to check out how Stan operates the car, um, we're going to use the episode of Set 1 Analyzer. Here we go. So, live telemetry stuff is going on here. It's not going to be seen for Stan so far because of the kind of version and kind of license I do use. However, um, as we're working together on the setup, I'm able to use it. Anyway, um, what is very important for me is uh, gonna have access to the sector time so I can at least tell on which kind of lap performance he is currently. And uh, that in itself will give me um, a lot of confidence, but right now I'm able to push to talk, so Stan can focus on his driving, and I can focus on the telemetry thing and all the other things, as well as on his driving. So Sunset Bend, turn 17, here we go, um, can't wait to be ready to see what's going on.
like this. Uh, He's doing the same mistake I did, very much so, in the beginning. He's too assistant, so hesitating too much on getting on with the power again. Car likes to oversteer a bit as well. Can take more of the curves. There's a, a kind of things we can really, really work on. Lap time at the minute 259.6. Uh, I'd really wish to see his lap times. Things are not working as I thought it would be. Oops. Turn 10 and 13 is where he lacks a lot of, I don't want to say patience, but a lot of uh, effort to, to accelerate. Also, uh, probably this is due to the re replay, but things are not being too smooth everywhere. So turn 14 looks a bit odd, like he's turning it twice there, despite this is a one input turn. Also turn 17 a bit too resistant. Not maximizing the track. Does it first time now, sort of, into turn 1. Turn 1 is very tricky though, in general. Um, let me see, turn 2. Yeah, also fairly too slow before the actual turn in. 
Same goes for for three and four. Um, not too early on on brakes, and especially too early off the brakes. Sounds weird, but that's exactly what is happening here. Um, I'd wish I'd see your pedal inputs in real time, but somehow yeah, doesn't want to. Uh, I mean, he's done a 59.23, and I'm gonna just let that go and let this uh, be displayed right now. Tone to me, it looks like he steers twice here. First time, like half for the second time. Yeah, it's it. It's all right, but he could line himself up easier. And he he just needs to hang inside his himself on the inside there. And I'm gonna tell him to stop after the lap because I've so far seen uh, plenty. And it's not really bad, you know, but definitely can have a lot of optimization going on. Alright, you can stop for now. So I am going to take out the car and I'm gonna drive around a little bit and um, gonna tell you a few things. It's it's no biggies in general. Like your lines are pretty much spot on um, or not not wrong in into first place. Your real problem right now is you're not maximizing the track enough and. I think you lose most of the time in the section between turn turn two and turn five, um, as you do not feel that too comfortable on uh, on the braking. And just yeah, to make sure I'm got the right fuel and everything. Um, I'm just gonna talk to you while I'm driving here. So basically, good. Um, so basically. You are too early on the brakes for two and four, and you're too early off the brakes. What you basically need to do is brake and steer into the corner. I mean, I was going too fast now, but once I get warmed up, same goes for here. You need to be on the brakes to make the car rotate and slow down towards the apex. Um, that is the most important thing you miss there. Here, turn six, a pretty much straightforward. Uh, at turn 7 a pretty much straightforward hairpin if you don't outbreak like me uh, you should do well here uh, next up turn 10 and 12 both times with two assistant going on the throttle uh, with the GTE and the traction control you literally just need to slow down and be on the throttle like hard here already really maximize the track you got available here and also for turn 12 you brake, and once being inside here on the apex, you can simply floor it. I think that should also be our target for the setup here. Then turn 13, you skip. 14, you start lining up here already, and then you just need to maximize more out of the track. You can hang yourself in on every curb a little bit. Uh, just put the tire on the curb or even beside, right beside on the inside. Um, as yeah, the Ferrari, I noticed, I noticed she went down to second there. I was only going to third. Yeah, maybe uh, that is, yeah, because of the power I usually look for. Okay. Um, same goes for turn three. I'm pretty much flat out after here, and just let the car go. I'm gonna have a look. I've no idea where I'm gonna to be time-wise, but here you can brake furthermore in the straight line speed and then you have to turn in quite quite late because the apex here is very late then turn two go a little later on the brakes but start the turn off here ditch in same goes for the four as you go a little wide beyond the brakes and then ditch in for the apex here 
So you just start your braking maneuvers a little too early and um, and those both corners. Turn six or seven, however you want to see it. I think it's turn seven on the official track map. I'm not sure what my delta is working to, but I think it's towards the car, so towards your time. Right now I'm eight tenths up, just so you know. And then you brake. And then you go... Yeah, that was throttling too early, but pretty much that's the way to go here. So I just lost four tenths of that regard on that corner. Come around tower. Okay, I'm running wide. This is because of talking and everything, but we're gonna keep carrying on. Still three and a half ahead. Going into the triangle or yeah, whatever that section is called. Really want to maximize your angles everywhere and be as early as possible on the throttle again. So we're back to half a second. And for sunset bend, yeah, I would really say the only thing you do wrong. If there is anything you do really wrong, is you go a little too wide towards the exit. Like you want to stay further more on the inside, as there is less bumps, in theory. At least on our factor too, it's exactly like that, but I feel the very same on I racing. The more inside and the slower and easier you take, the better you are. I nearly lost it. Yeah, but remember here, brake a little later, keep on the brakes while turning in. Same here, you really want to be on the inside though, otherwise, yeah, it, exactly that happens, you're going to get shot wide a little. Then turn 7, pretty much straight forward, you want to turn in a little late maybe, just in order to maximize the exit here and be as early as possible on the throttle as you're carrying and building all the speed towards the upcoming turn 10 let's have a look, we lost 4 tenths last time around there compared to you yeah that looked a lot better Yeah, we need to fix this on the setup a little bit. It's no biggie, but the car just wants to step out a little here and there. So we just need to work that around about the bumps. That is... No, okay, that gave me a slowdown. So, the first thing I did right now, don't do it. Uh, in the first right-hander. Uh, so this gives you a proper slowdown. Okay. Um... So here for Sunset Bend, you just do it exactly right, you go in and just wait for the turn to come again and then you can floor it all the way out here. Okay. It's probably, we need to try whether second or third is better or whether we can change the gearing for that corner. That was a kind of proper turn one. You may really want to skip the first apex of this turn two, as the first part of the turn that is going to the left hand side. Oh, for God's sake. Um, you really want to skip that because the actual turn is on the later one. Um, this is a, it is a stupid corner because actually the first apex marks a left hand corner and the second apex marks the, the road hitting another crossroad and then carrying on on the track. Um, it will become quite apparent what I mean when you have a look at Google. And I might just bring the picture up. Um, so right now I'm not sure what I what I did um, lap time wise. Um, I think nothing nothing valid. But uh, we right now have an optimal of a 57.7. And uh, yeah. So any questions so far? No, not really. I, uh, I'm taking it that I need to probably go deeper on the brakes and obviously maximize curves. Yes. 
Um, I mean, I tried to still get in a proper lap. Like, this one was just valid. As much as the card it seems, but it is valid. Doesn't, didn't even get me a slowdown now. I also tried to, to get up a proper sunset bend then. Maybe a little too aggressive there, but generally, yeah, we need to practice that turn hard. So, I'm gonna go for the final go. Okay, that was not intended. Just need to have one clean lap though. Anyway, I'm half a, half a tenth off now, uh, half a second. Surprise, surprise. Maximizing the track here at Sebring is obviously a difficult thing, as the curbs are quite narrow or steep, and at the very same time the grass is, uh, yeah, making you spin incredibly easy. Yeah, not your friend. So we really want to be slow enough for this turn 10 and then hit the throttle on the, on the right exact moment to throw yourself out of the corner. According to my experience that's how you drive the GTEs around there. If you're okay I just go for another one. Also you can put half the car on the left hand curb here, it doesn't matter, it's just okay. I'm not sure. So we definitely need to do a lot of work on the setup in terms of stability still and how it works with the tires all together. Okay. Um, not sure whether we're bottoming out right now or anything. So I'll just go for a final, really final lap and then gonna hand over the car back to you. Okay, no worries. How much how much fuel you had in the car? I filled it up. So 90 liters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I thought we had the same then. I was just wondering. Yeah, right now I feel the rear tire has been pretty hot. Yeah, doesn't help the balance at all. No, I can't get in the clean lap right now. It's I'm just gonna stop it. But um, yeah, I think it became quite apparent of what I meant to do or what I tried to to give you here. Okay. Um, so yeah, feel free to take the car out again, and uh, we're gonna check on on further more things. This will quite need some adaptation because turn two and turn four are extremely tricky in terms of how to brake, how hard to brake, how long to brake, and um, yeah, when to turn in in order to get the apexes done and stuff, but you will get there. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, take your time. You really need that um, dre break in at that point. And this is where I say the car lacks some stability.
try to take turn 10 in second gear. Same with turn 12. Yeah, I would also advise and try not to hit the inside curb as it settled, uh, yeah. yeah, fucks up the car balance. to look very carefully as uh, we had a 158.794 uh, as a PB so far um, and I'm loving to see him improve now Yeah, that was a good turn one. See about his braking. Uh, yep, could have turned late uh, in later twice here. So turn two and turn four a little later on the turn in, and then you get a nice food on the exit. Seven looks okay. Eight and nine and no real turns. Is it too late on the braking here? It's no biggie though. Yeah, I can already throttle a little earlier here, but I know this takes patience and trust in the car, so just wait for it there. Yep, final turn looked good. Just in general, try not to over rotate on the on the steering wheel because the car. Um, turns very well with very little steering input. Ah, too bad, a little too late on the brakes here. So I'm interested to see the lap time though. A 58... 741, so despite this mistake into Sunset Bend, straightforward an improvement it's good to see yeah especially turn four look better Last time around you were a little late for turn 10 on the brakes, try to take it a little bit earlier to have a better exit. Yeah, very good. You can see you can carry a lot of speed through here. Now turn 14, second curb, hit it hard. Exactly like that. Oh dear, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. It's just, the car feels pretty twitchy at times. Yeah. more laps or yeah so far I think you should get a little bit more confident confident with the break-in lines and 2 4 and 10 and 12 especially turn 12 I think you saw it yourself that you could have gone there uh, through there a lot quicker and with more power correct yeah 
Yeah, that's is ex sort of exactly the turn in you want to have for turn two. Just come in a little bit more from the outside, then can carry a lot more speed. Turn 12 could still go earlier on the throttle. Try to make this turn 14 a little more fluid here. So you don't upset the rear end before hitting the brakes here. And also I think for the turn you need to slow down a little earlier. But apart from that, line looks okay here. Can okay. still mount a little more of the curbs here and there, just not too much. Just really briefly put the inside tire beyond the inside curb. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, welcome to Sunset Ben. Despite you did a mistake in your first attempt of the last run, you did personal best. Turn it in too early for turn one. True. So he knows it already himself, which is a good sign to see. Uh, see, actually very aware of what I'm asking for him, or of him. Yes, turn four was really good on the, after the turn in. Take your time and, and sort of get that line to your mind. Just, we're just gonna let him drive at this point. He's, he's doing just minor mistakes, but this is totally all right due to the fact that he just learns it. Yep, 14 and 15 were just brilliant. 16 was, well, a little overshot, but uh, you get in there definitely. It himself. Yeah, tries to try to take it a little bit more easy into that. So still a 59-0, just three tenths off. Sadly he fucked up turn one again. How good your turn one is is uh, always an indication of how fluid the car goes on past the left hand side or the right hand side of the wall, how hard it understeers towards the off track or in just in general, um, how you come out of that turn. Uh, he was quite too slow and too early on the, uh, on the apex there, so the thing is if you turn into early you need to lift and you need to open the steering again and steer and turn in again. This is costing you so much time if you are too early on that apex. So just mounted that curb again, no biggie though. Uh, it's just a little too resistant there still, but keep keep working on it. Yep, 
10.14 was really good. For 10.16 I advise use the second gear, that should also increase the rotation a little bit of the car. Okay. Seven oh nine. But despite her first turn, wasn't that good. And this looks apparently better. It's still a little too slow. A little too early on the turn in. What has been your personal best before? I think a 58.5. 58.5, okay. Can it easily beat that? <clears throat> so 58.5 is done so far in testing. And as a matter of fact, that he is just scratching around the 58.7s right now. If he gets in the laps some sort of proper, you know, he's still missing a lot of. Uh, a lot of time in the upcoming turn 15, 16 complex. Yeah, you can take way more curb of the, on that little left hand kink in order to improve the uh, entry into 16 on the right hand side then. And full throttle. You can really hit it way earlier there. And across the line in the 158.520. And he's still missing some potential. That turn one looked a lot better. That should be a real blast on his timing sheet now. So bring it home there. So turn four, little to assist them. What is the lap time delta? Point one two. Up. Up. Yeah, great. So here we are, looking towards the 58, three. If he gets the rest of the lap nailed to his standards. So far, uh, yeah, he knows it himself. Ah, oh, slow down. Slow down. I'm. Um, I feel where I'm making huge mistakes, so just need more seat time. Yeah, hence why I'm not saying that much at the minute. Let's try to go full throttle as early as possible in Sunset Bend now. I'm gonna make the call. And full throttle. Okay, drifted uh, a little. I went th earlier than you. I went earlier than you said. Okay. Yeah, I still seem to have that little delay and I still cannot see put, uh, pedal input, certainly.
way better turn 10. Not as worse over turn 12 than you thought it's gonna be, right? Right. Yeah, you can really uh, mount those curves hard still. Yeah, I felt real lazy through there. Yeah. Full throttle. Yeah, you're some sort of a uh, little too late on the brakes there. You need to be more to the inside to minimize the way. Still 48.4. F58.4 That was a good lap there Yeah, you can carry more speed into turn 2 which then makes the approach for 4 a little easier Yeah, very good turn 12. Alright, and really cut those curbs a little, just mount them. Uh. Yeah, it was, was good, like turn 15 was good and the left king could be cut a little more. This does not unsettle the car too bad for 16 then, and then you're going to be fine. Alright, floor it. Yeah, getting there. Look at that! 157.9! That is a major improvement! Definitely doing a good job here. So turn one very quick now, turn two, let's have a look. Ah, uh, turned in too early there. Yeah, you're blowing the mic pretty hard right now. Sorry. It's all good. I'm pulling a Sean Cole, sorry. <laughs> well we have signature, to we have to signature identify. move. Yeah, we have to identify with our community, don't we? Right, so uh, what you're feeling right now about line and your driving compared to what you've seen? Uh, yeah, I mean, the pointers that you're given on where the entry should be, where the brakes should be, um, I just need to put Sunset together properly I, i'm seeing that i need to turn in and then break in a straight line past the uh the the right wall ends i need to be on the brakes just before the the, the right wall ends and breaking in a straight line and then get done with the brakes and turn into the corner and wait for the gas point um i, I gotta put that together and i haven't yet uh turn one i'm starting to figure out that if I just wait a little longer to turn in, things get better. I, I'm, I got a really bad habit of turning in too early on a lot of these corners. Again, I don't have much of a good excuse other than my experience with Sebring is from Aceto Corsa, and we all know the woes there. Um, the curbs in Aceto are gigantic, especially going onto the back stretch. That's why I'm so timid about mounting the curbs like you're telling me to. I just got to get that out of my mind and get you know get focused there 
the car the car does feel pretty twitchy under high speed braking like if i trail into a corner it feels like the back end wants to come around and i've gone probably further with my brake bias than i think you know is is possibly logical but it keeps it keeps the car a little more stabilized for me um it, i'm sure it hurts me in the straight braking zones but uh, the like if i'm feeling more comfortable with turns two and turn four uh, I know what I'm doing wrong when I do it wrong, uh, based on what you've told me. Um, I, th I can't remember. 10, 10, I think I've got it figured out. Um, yeah, you get some better through 10. 12 is the right-hander before the high-speed section of lefts, correct? Yeah. 12, I've still got to get my mind wrapped around, you know, just waiting. Uh, it feels like I need to turn in way earlier for that corner. Than what I'm supposed to, so mm -hmm. I catch myself. I catch myself braking early and turning in early, and then I'm on the curb, like you're telling me not to. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of good pointers that I just need to work out and get seat time practicing. Let me just change a few things here on the setup. Um, I will lower the rebound uh, the rebound dampening, um, in order to give. Um, oh, sorry. I'm going to stiff the low speed front rebound dampening in order to give the car a little bit more rotation on the on under acceleration. I think it lacks that to a certain extent. Like I, I feel there is understeer in the car quite a little when being on throttle. Okay. Just just a notch. And I'm going to both hardening the low speed rebound dampening in the rear again. Despite it's pretty stiff already, but the problem is just as you say. Um, you're going to lift the, um, oh, yeah, the car is lifting its, its ass quite too much um, on the braking. Um, hence why I'm also dampening the high-speed rebound dumping in the back. And I'm also stiffening the low-speed compression dumping in the back by two clicks in order to, uh, yeah, still keep the car rotating out of the corners. Um, that should work very well in that regard. Um, beyond that, um, yeah, your braking so far is fine on the brake bias if you want to keep it keep it like that. Just basically go out and and try again and see if there is any improvement to the yeah to the twitchiness on the brakes. Unless you have any further questions or w want me to do something else, whatever you're up to. No, I mean I'm fine. I'm fine going back out. Uh, I didn't. I don't know if maybe you want. I know earlier you were trying to get a good solid, you know, benchmark lap in. I'm definitely willing to watch a couple more laps if you want to take the car out and do that, um, and just kind of visualize what I need to do. Uh, I, I don't. I'm one of those drivers where it doesn't hurt me to watch somebody faster uh it, it helps so um but it's your call yeah, i don't mind sure. well i can go out again it's no problem all right so uh, let me quickly mount the meat of the wheel and uh all right just need to put up the right uh, push to uh yeah disable push to talk because i don't want to sit there mount a button all the time I also gonna try to radio a little bit with a full throttle about turn uh, yeah sunset bend turn 17. Okay. Oh, I need to learn to stay over the grass there. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I mean, I drive this Ferrari quite aggressively, though, maybe even too aggressive. Also, this turn 10, you want to turn in quite late because this apex is some sort of narrow, quite located at the back of the turn. Oh, I need to get the speed right into the corners. I'm used to too much Formula Sim racing right now. No problem. Bad excuse though. But as you can see here though, you really want to mount those curbs quite heavily. This all is no off track. So you can mount them pretty hard. You just need to find a way to really make the set setup stable enough. Also I'm trying to, to, to do, do a good braking approach. Can be over the brakes here, just wait and I'm full throttle here already. Uh, it's too early a little. So you just want to make that little more of a turn beforehand. Okay. Also I'm going, I go quite straight for a very long time here. Just wait for the wall to some sort of surpass. Lay it on the brakes, lay it on the turning. Just want to be fluent around here everywhere. Can be much more on the inside on turn four in general. Okay. Just need to some sort of wait till the car's ready to be throttled again. Oh. Yeah, for me the brake boys is way too far at the front. Sorry. This is okay. The bad job of me not putting up the button box with me in order to rotate it. I can do it on the dash way. Correct. At the same time, the braking bias is golden though for turn 17. I'm just ever so slightly locking a little too much there. And I just took like a good three and a half tenth out of you in turn 12 here. Just because of taking it so aggressively and flew it. So that is that is a lot of where you can still do on on your lap here. Or was this my own one because I'm right now 12 seconds off that. Oh, I've got myself a slow down. Okay, uh, stop believing what I'm saying. <laughs> The madman Michi Hoyer, never too aggressive. Yeah. Never too perfect. Right, after you've passed that last little turn around before the bridge, that is when you can hit the full throttle. I think that is a good benchmark. Okay. just wanted to die. There is some sort of a really cliffy edge on the left hand curb on turn 4. That is where the apex is. That is a good visual reference for it. Mount of that stupid curb. I mean, the curbs here around Sebring are quite violently. Or can be quite violently. Does the car feel better on the high speed oversteer? Yeah, it's not as severe as before. Huh? Okay. Having said that, 
dead. Whoa. Well, kept it out of the wall. Uh, it's the first valid lap though. Actually, there's something wrong with that setup. As it is. Let me see, I think it's the uh, compression dampening or the, uh, the general high speed dampening that is a bit too strong. Just out of curiosity, I turned my fan on. I'm not getting any wind noise, are you? Say again? You're not getting any wind noise, are you? I turned my fan on. No, 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 I don't get any wind. At least not very much. It's just generally when you speak. Might be back to more understeer in the car generally, um, but I hope from that that we gain an, an overall stability and not like sliding around the car too much. Did you understand what I mean with that uh, cutty edge in turn five? With that? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm seeing it. It's just I think that the yellow line that's painted before and just suddenly goes around this, um, yeah, an unfluid corner I want to call it. left-hand turn. It is a very slim margin there but if you put it right on there you do not get like hooked up leaving the curb. Also your line here is pretty good in that regard to go a little wide just wait for the turn to come and then be full throttle. The car should be in general uh, more willing to turn here now and be not as rigid over the bombs. Yeah, a little more understeer in the car now, but for a greater seal of stability. that inside curb to hook yourself around there. I'll turn 10, I'll try to stay off the curb this time myself. You may really want to get in a little earlier on the brakes for turn 13 there but just to be more precise when turning in into 13 you know copy Yeah, uh, 
I've been really doing it hard now. But anyway, here we go. 57.3. Ah, uh, yeah. I was I was too early on the turn in as well, as you've seen there. But this was a more solid lap in that regard. We're still we're still lacking three tenths. But just now, feel free to get out and um, see what the car feels like to you. We might go okay. even go back a little because I think the the real speed of the setup has decreased. But we've invested a little into stability, especially on the braking. And remember to put back your brake bias to your liking. All right. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself so I'm not mouth breathing. Say again? I'm gonna mute myself so I'm not Sean calling the mic. It's okay, just have a push to talk or something. I'll make out a, a coffee real quick. So anyway, um, as a little result after a good hour of driving, um, as Dan has said, his personal best has been a 58.5 so far. He's down to a 57.9 already. And um, I'm going to be pretty interested now because as I've said, I expect the car has lost some, some, some general speed as I was understeering out of turn 1 with I think a little less speed than we could have taken it beforehand. Um, but as, an, um, as a good trait for that, we got good braking stability right now into the car. And um, that should be the way to go. Especially as we're talking about endurance. Uh, you know, it's not all about the one lap pace in endurance. Sometimes it's about being somewhat quick, but consistently quick and consistently safe, especially when there's other cars on the track and you need to overtake and it's quite bumpy and it's quite a narrow track also I mean Sebring is great for multi-class racing um, as it enables some real fun and uh, good situations but uh, at the same time Sebring is kinda kinda hard to be in a middle average car I mean you know we're gonna have problems passing the, GT, the GT3s on the straights and at the same time, when the DPs are going for us, we're going to have problems letting them by. So let's have a look. Crossing the line. From the crew chief here. Taken it a little too conservative. Too bad I cannot see the real inputs of driving. Yeah, I also try and focus on learning mounting those curbs. It will take time.
Yeah, that was a brilliant final turn. And across the line, 58-0. Yeah, great turn one. I think it was an off track. Never mind though. Hit turn two, hit turn three. A little too far away from the apex and then out of the rhythm in turn five. It's no biggie. Apart from that slide, turn 10 is uh, really becoming your friend now. That also was a good 12. Actually, that is 13, sorry. Um, just a little more in. You need to be so precise, sadly, on the apex. Okay, you wanted to mount that curb too hard now. How do you feel with the setup? Um, it's, I, I can tell I'm trying to push things instead of uh, be smooth. The setup does feel a little better, for sure. Um, that was all me throwing the car sideways like that. Um, but I, I mean, it does feel more stable. Well, that's good then. It just isn't as ro rotational anymore out of the fast turns, right? Correct. Yeah, so we may need to fix that. Um, this is probably because it is so bumpy in the fast, fast turn section. There is a lot of work still waiting on us. Yeah, you see, if you get the angle, the approach angle, and the apex right, it's just so fluent that turn 13 there. Perfect 14 and 15. Yeah, a little too far away from the left hand kink, and then obviously not the perfect entry into the right hand, but. That is hours of, hours of work you can still do. Yeah, your sunset bend looks looks really solid now. Yeah, the first part of this section just was brilliant, and then in the second you were just giving away some track, um, yeah, track width. Sebring is one of those tracks where you really have to maximize the tarmac that's been made available for you in every thinkable way. I mean, it's quite like that in, in many circuits, but here in Sebring I think it's quite, uh, quite important. Especially in the first sector, sadly. Yeah, 
very good 13. So I absolutely see no evidence why he should uh. not improve further on during this session. Oh, that will give him a slowdown, yeah. That was just that much too much. But actually, mounting the curb like that is quite possible there, just not as much as he did. Hmm, call that lag, I guess. By the way, don't get confused on the lights you see in the air. I'll just turn down the graphics settings a lot for Daytona 24. Turned in way too early there. Yeah, you also broke a little too early. I know it's quite hard to get it right. I, I do not have a real referen uh, visual reference point there either. But you can break a lot later there and just go a little more straight. Yeah, I'm over half a second off right now. Sort of. Oh no, I was sideways in traffic. I was definitely dead. Okay. Well. Yeah. I've definitely, uh, I've definitely improved on uh, my personal lap time. I uh, yeah, quite much so. I started off really not being able to do consistent 58s. Um, I was actually, I don't know, yesterday when I was doing some practice, I was in probably, I'm gonna say, average 59s. Uh, mid mid 59s to low 59s. Uh, every now and then I dip into a 58, and I think my best lap yesterday was like a 58.5, and that was just a fluke. <laughs> uh, but now I feel, I don't know. I feel like I, I at least know I have targets to shoot for now, rather than just blindly going out on track and trying to do a good lap time. I mean. I would say before this, I couldn't complete more than a couple of laps before I was pushing too hard or hitting a curb where I wasn't supposed to and spinning the car around. I think the reason I'm not doing complete stints right now is because I'm still trying to find those limits that you've told me to push for. Um, I think the, I think seat time and, and you know, just I hate to say it, but hours and hours and hours more with what you've told me in mind is probably going to be the way. Yeah. Um, I hear you about the hours and hours and hours, but I, I just said it a, a few minutes ago. Um, it is the hot part about this track, and I need to face this as well as we're going to go into endurance, you know. I've done some racing on that circuit, but um, not quite as successful, and this is also because of me not knowing the exact spots where the, the deadly bumps are and where the manageable bumps are and then how to mount the curbs and not mount the curbs, how to mount the corners and apexes and not to mount them. Um, this is exactly exactly the case. And I mean, right now, I was just saying, you know, if you keep going like that, I'm pretty sure you're going to be into the mid-57s by quite soon. 
like you know you just went out on the uh, uh, on the setup and it was a bad turn one and what did you do a 58 zero i think which is just less than a tenth off from your pb as we're speaking about so pb is a 50 right. 57 nine, seven, nine, and you did 58 zero, six, four, and surely you gave two tenths away in turn one um so that in excel uh, in in itself um shows the potential um, I'm not sure what's your what's your optimal saying right now, or is it the car's optimal? What what you see as an optimal? Let's see here, my personal optimal. Well, your it says session best lap is a 57.3, so that's what you've done. Yeah. My personal optimal is a 57.50. Yeah, I got a 57.0. Yeah. So that there you go. That is um that is what you can do. Um. And it's just if about. I just put it all together. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this this track is divided in seven sectors, and it's pretty sure and pretty easy to say in 25 laps, um, 25 attempts. There is going to be that one attempt that's just going to be pitch perfect. Right. Now it's about just getting it all together. Um, right. I, I think I think honestly, what I need to do is, I need to get alone, turn my delta off, and work on specific part parts of the track. In other words, instead of instead of worrying about a lap time, like I need to focus, obviously very heavy on mounting the curbs and getting the section just before the back straight. Yes. You know, spot on because um, I lose I lose a lot of time sporadically there, depending upon how I approach those, and I need to I need to come up with some some handy braking markers that I can I can hit every single time and my turn in points and know how much I can put the car on the curb. I think that will drastically improve things. The final corner, I've I've definitely got a better idea of what I need to be doing and whenever I don't do it, I know immediate okay, yeah, should have turned in a little earlier there, or shouldn't have broke as early or should have broke in a straight line longer or whatnot. Same kind of same thing with the first turn. It's uh as well you know, I can feel immediately if I turn in too early or if I broke too early. Yep. Whenever you pointed that out last time, I I, I was thinking that already. So, uh. well, this is an important step. Um, first of all, I probably would not turn off the lap time delta because you know you want to see uh, if you put yourself a solid lap in, and then say, okay, I take this as an average, and now I'm going to focus on each and every sector. To get them right or just pick i don't know sector two and sector five rather than de push the entire lap you know just what you could do is um put yourself a good benchmark put yourself in the 57 8 i would say just you know picking random numbers here um and then say okay this was a pretty okay-ish lap now i know where i was doing not too good and i know where i was doing pitch perfect so there might be the sector four where you've done pitch perfect lines and, and stuff so we just go sector four like okay i know exactly where to, where to go and i'll just go along there and meanwhile i already focus on what do i want to do different and let's say sector six what do i right. want to make different in turn 14 15 16 and you're just gonna make yourself sure of that beforehand and then you try to nail the final turn before going into the specific sector you want to uh, focus on so that the delta stays stable once you enter it and then you go through the lines and you go through the corners and mount the apexes and mount the, the curbs and everything um, and then look at the delta to see whether you improved and to see whether um, the feeling you have from going through the corner um, correlates with uh, the, the lap time improvement or whether you know, there's sometimes a line or a drive through a certain corner feels just like a blast and you look at the time and you actually be slow and like, okay, uh, either I was not aggressive yeah. enough or either I did pick the wrong line or I did something else wrong, uh, but that needs to be figured out. So I would advise to always at all time test and keep on the delta time since okay. it indicates kind of speed. I know people say I don't care about time, which is basically true, but you know, if you go through a corner and it feels good, and you're like, oh yeah, that's the way to go, and then someone else turns around and say, dude, your lap times is just not good. I mean, you wonder why, because you feel like you, 
you're, you're nailing the apexes and then you start looking at the data and compare your lap time to another guy's lap time and you see oh dear someone is going two tenths faster through turn one and i feel like doing it perfectly right you know right so the lap time delta might actually point you to a different direction and even if you did the corner wrong by accident at some point that might just happen where it's like oh shit i broke myself so hot for one and then you go through it and you floor it because you want to make up that time and suddenly you're just kissing the exit curb and you look at the delta time and say okay i'm, I'm 200 slower through the turn itself but now my sprint to turn three gets me another tenth or something because of an uh, increased exit speed or something like that you you know it's it's sometimes the little right. things that happen uh, that makes sense so yeah I'll, I'll i'll definitely do that i'll, I'll keep the delta on then but i mean i i'm just i'm thinking about the session i had with you at daytona and how i honestly i did improve a little uh during that session but the real improvement i felt was after taking what you said and going and working by myself and just focusing on like the the write up you did after um after the the session that kind of explained okay here's here are things i saw you do consistently wrong uh here are things i saw you do consistently right here's where you could have been better here's where you you know your your fastest lap you did this but you you did this every now and then and it to totally took away from things those those pointers i mean i don't know how many times i reread that that synopsis you know before i would go do a practice session just to remind myself okay i need to focus here need to focus here and here specifically those you know two or three or four places um that that honestly probably helped me more than anything uh just just to remind myself you know stay focused here and do these things here uh like for instance the the final turn every time i'm going through that final turn now i'm thinking of of kind of what you were saying where you picked you picked out that that the uh, on the inside wall there's that last point so to speak maybe it's bad terminology but it's like that last point where the where the inside wall sticks out in sunset that's kind of where you want to aim for your your full throttle mark you know those those type of things as I'm making my laps are what what I need to do well. Ah, oh, thank you very much indeed. I mean that's pretty um, pretty important feedback for me. Um, but yeah, it is exactly no, I mean, that. It. I mean, I'm just saying what worked for me, based on. It's it's interesting what we because did. Um, it, it worked for many people. So it, it's not the first session I do. Um, with you, um, having said so, it's I've not done ages, you know. But um, literally everyone that was in here, um, sometimes there was improvements in in the session. Like um, as you said in um, Daytona, and the people have watched this, uh, your your improvement was there right at the end of the session, where you can gonna, you know, you were coming from consecutively doing low 40s to consecutively doing high 39s which was that little improvement. However, um, the write-up I'm gonna do, or the write-up I've done, and it's gonna be published tomorrow, um, gonna show what exactly you did furthermore in the aftermath. So, as you said, and this is some sort of where I describe learning by sleeping. Um, sounds weird, but it's pretty much what it does because you know you've you get so much input right now you get so much input it's just not feasible and then you sleep one night and you kind of revert something in your head and you get up the next night and you get your consultancy report from me you reread it and you go sleep again and your mind keeps reprocessing it and then you hit the track and you come to turn one and you know exactly what you what you need to focus on to improve and that is what get you up the boost then it's not the actual session or not the the two hours that you're gonna do with me right here it's gonna be what you take from those two hours and and put it in and rework it for the next 10 hours or something yeah, um, absolutely and that's what's gonna make you better uh, so I, basically what i do is i just put out the base and then you keep working on the base so in the end it's also your improvement i just gave you the way to go i just gave you the guide um, 
it's like basically it, I, I like to compare it with parental thing um, and if you want to drive you can go out again basically oh no 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 it's okay I just I have a okay hit the I hit the gas sorry um, it is basically just that thing um, your parents put you on the feet or put you yeah put you standing on the feet for the first time and then you some sort of like you can't actually call this walking when one or two years old are uh, well put in the one foot before each other and uh, being hung up at the arms by the parents still um, but the parents are putting out the baseline right there and at some point the one or two year old kids just gonna stand up and and try doing the same thing without being held and they you know they develop their own style of walking so to say um, just walking um, the walking itself at first and at some point their own style of walking according to their anatomy and body and stuff um, so yeah that is that is basically what this session is doing as well uh, that's awesome never thought of myself as an infant sim racer <laughs> well, I wouldn't come across <laughs> didn't want to come across like that but I uh, think no, I'm just kidding I think it's a good comparison though um, yeah so anyway I think um, from the point where you are right now um, if you want just just go out again I've got okay. um, a little more time left and uh, I try to give you a little feedback here and there uh, but mainly just want to try to let you go and do your own thing right now as okay to release you in that phase of uh, self-explanationary thing because as you just said the moment I said something what you do wrong you had it in your mind already so by knowing what you do wrong right now um, you're gonna get this overshooting and not overshooting and then finding the right balance you're already in the process of coming to that point but um, it just takes time This will be interesting, it's getting dark. Yeah, I was just checking. Um, still 26 degree track temp. The good thing here is though, you see where the track goes by this... Uh, yeah, I want to say... Runway fire. So pretty much interesting. Uh, the darkness not gonna make it easier though to hit apexes. I'm gonna tell them that real quick. Obviously running in night is good practice for now already as uh, you're gonna have to face that in the race but for actual driving line and stuff you may wanna perhaps uh, yeah, test in, in, um, in lightning conditions or in light con daylight conditions. Yeah. I mean it's okay for now surely. Oh, I just hit the inside wall. Yeah I saw it. It's just that time of the type of things that happen right now as it is dark and um, so I mean you can still keep going it's good for getting in the rhythm and just as you said do what you know what to do and, and just you know um, sort of making the things you already can do cement them into your concrete so to say yeah, well, doesn't make any sense what I say but I think you know what I'm trying to get across Yep. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> Bed again. Yeah. 
So that also... Maybe I do need to step away. Um, gonna bring us towards the end of this session to a certain extent, as... Um, the job is done so far to get 80-85%. Now, you know, we've done the major readjustments and driving line and braking approaches and, and making use of the track, making use of the curbs and the space available. So, what he needs to do right now is to get these basic settings or these basic adjustments in his uh, flesh and blood, uh, how you would say here in Germany. Um, this is something I can still assist, no worries. But right now, as he just, as we just pointed out, he now needs to put in the work, uh, get the new faces, get the new uh, approaches in, and, and, and keep revising himself and whether he's doing it right. And the consultancy report I'm going to um, turn up here is going to help him on that regard, um, as he will get a lot of pictures and, and driving lines uh, being shown through um, through the turns and I can see I can really tell you real quick um, what this looks like just let me bring it up real quick um, just the other side bear with me So, oops, just wanted to look. Yeah, too early in turn one. This darkness is not making things easy, but this is basically how the things look like. Um, so this is the driving line I put into the uh, I put into the picture. Uh, I also make not if uh, yeah markers there that's gonna be explained explained in the actual consultancy report later. Um, as you know, you always learn by looking at something, by hearing something, by reading something and getting into your brain. Sim racing is a lot about of mental awareness, mental strength, having knowledge available and making access of that knowledge. That's what sim racing is uh, really, really hard for or known for. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to put that into consideration and trying to put that up. Um, and trying to increase the performance in that regard. So now as it is pretty dark, um, I'm going to be interested to see his lap times here. And now he will obviously hear some things or say. Um, yeah, he is only going to hear once he watches this video the first yeah, time. Yeah, this nighttime business is way different. Yep, there you go. This is exactly what I mean. Yep, I know. I had to learn this painfully when driving ILMS. Sometimes you simply do not know whether you pass the first outstanding wall or the second. Especially in Sunset Bench. Uh, ben. one 
think that lap time is going to be a 58 something if he somewhat keeps it together. So despite we got floodlights around, not every part of the circuit has been lit. Very good turn for 16 there. All I keep thinking is all these American dollars and we don't have enough lights at Sebring? Not yet. Because I've seen tracks that have been more worse in more wealthy countries or same wealth countries. So. Like if I was thinking of LaSalle International in Qatar. <laughs> Where the guys at MotoGP race during the night. I mean, that truck is lit up like the day. Yep. Too early. So from going in the night, you will be able to really um, examine how good you understood the driving lines and how much Sebring as a racetrack is into your flesh and blood. As sadly as you can see you need to kind of guess where you're going rather than know exactly where you're going. Yeah right now I'm definitely guessing at times. Yeah. Also um, I'm not sure about your seat position but if you can tilt your monitor a little to the forwards it's going to be easier to see in the dark depending on what kind of screen you run. I definitely can't really move my triples. Yeah, here you are. I mean, if you're sitting some sort of above the screen with your head, it's okay, or just, you know, the eyes hitting the top. Uh, my standard seat position is my eyes being more like in the lower third of the screen, so everything above the eyes is pitch black for me, as not looking above on the pixels. Your turn 15 this time has been a blast, whereas the other ones were rather bad. Sucked. I like how you say it straight away and I try to describe it as less, uh, less severe. I know. Close call there with the wall. Now this is the point of time where you really want to go straight for long and maybe little, a slightly overshot turn 1 and turn 17. As in to not meet the wall early. Just like that. It might still be quicker than meeting the wall early and then entirely fucking up your exit. Still need more curbs, but that was probably I felt the best. Yeah, it definitely looked good, especially uh, the approach into 15 was a blast. Yep, first good sunset bend. 
I left a half a second off, but it is dark. Well, you're getting there, definitely. That was a lovely turn one for dark, um, dark conditions. Really getting into a nice rhythm, nice rhythm right now. So sitting his marks at every turn, starting to really do good. Love the apexing. Could have been a bit quicker. A little too late for the 16 right hander, otherwise, a pretty solid run through it. Oh. I don't know how I didn't hit the wall right there. Well. No idea. One. Yeah, it looks good. So just two tenths of what you did in the uh, in the daylight, where you could see a lot more. So that in itself is an indication that you're definitely on the right path. Yeah, I'm pleased. I mean, I'm not super duper fast right now, but I wasn't after our Daytona session, like we pointed out. Um, I got a lot more work to do. I got a lot more. I got a lot more focus and concentrate on certain parts of the track like we talked about. Um, I, I look forward to, uh, in the next day or so, a write-up on what I consistently did wrong. Something I can, like with the Daytona deal, something I can look at before I go do a session to remind myself, okay, focus on these points. Uh, I think that's what's really going to help, like you said, you know. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, I will learn to walk, Mitchie. I promise. Well, I would rather say you're able to already walk. You, you're just trying to sprint and then and, and be really quick on the feet. No, I mean, uh, in all honesty, you, you're going the right way. You're going the right direction. No doubt about that. Um, it's just about, as I said, you need to um, some sort of. Someone needs to wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning, and you'd be ready to take the right line around Sebring. And once you, once you get that done, uh, you're gonna be fine for ages. Well, I will set my alarm then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. At uh, 2:58 a.m., I'm gonna do delivery of the consultancy report. Just kidding. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, pull. Just pull a 24-hour Lamar deal and call me uh, at. 3 or 4 a.m. like you did Sean uh, and awesome. I'll be ready to go yeah exactly I know I'm, I'm happy you enjoyed it I I'm happy you you already did your progress there um, so any questions at a minute nope not uh, not at the moment I mean I'm sure I'm sure some things will pop into my brain and and I'll shoot you a direct message or something through discord uh, if, if I can't figure them out on my own or I just need confirmation but um based on what you've what you've the pointers you've given me I can definitely go work on I can definitely go work on some uh some some faster sectors um I'm I'm calling it sectors rather than lap times that way I'm not focusing on that total lap time I can still leave the delta up but I'm going to focus on sectors more than anything like I, th I feel like even in the dark I was getting better at 
the the curves before the back stretch. I, I know I, I didn't necessarily didn't necessarily put them all together properly, but you know, one lap I was really good into the first of the three. The second lap I was really good into the first and the second, and then screwed the third one. Um, or I was really good on the third one or the second one. You know, I, I know what I need to be doing. I just need to put it together and practice it and get. I hate saying this because I don't feel like it's all just muscle memory, but there is quite a bit of muscle memory. For instance, the turn in on turn four, um, where you were talking about how the curb kind of disappears on you and that's your apex point. I've got to get that muscle memory or that turn in feeling down to second nature, so to speak. Yeah, pretty much so. Um, I mean, it is uh, quite an achievement what you've already done, and I pretty much agree with what you said. Like, a lot of your turn 15, 16 approaches, I want to call it, you were thinking in sectors there, if you take every turn as a sector, you sometimes you will maximize in sector 1, then you will maximize in sector 2. And right. at some point you were, well, maximizing all three of them to a certain extent. And to see yeah. that was was really pleasing myself, despite it was dark and you have so many lights down there. And you, you know, sometimes you see the lights, but you can't see the curb. And the curb just appears as soon as you, yeah, your front headlights just point on them. And uh, with that being said, it makes it entirely difficult to hit the right line in that regard. And you, you just did very well there, um, as we were speaking about maximizing the sectors and, 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 and getting them chained all together. And I think right now, it's just, as you say, time uh, time to keep going on. And maybe, you know, if you keep if you keep driving there in the dark and you master the dark and some, at some point it's going to be daylight again, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I need to exactly turn in here and there. And you, you're going to find your points in the night and they're going to be crystal clear in the day. Um, yeah, I, I was just thinking that, that if, if I do some more practice in the night, um, like you were, you know, you made the comment earlier that, you know, driving in the night now will really show whether or not you've got this tr this track, you know, ingrained in you, and you know where your turn in points are. I think that might even help more to go practice it when it's dark, and then, like you said, then you turn the lights on and everything. Uh, yeah, okay, I see exactly where I was pointing and what I needed to do here, and I could I could maybe eke out a little more here and there, yeah. based on what I got the feeling with in the dark. So. Very I'm, much. I'm so. not, I look forward to the next few hours of uh, of driving that I do. I'm probably not going to do much more driving at this point. Uh, I've got some things I got to do this afternoon, um, but I either tonight or for sure tomorrow morning will be back in the car and trying to go over these things in my head. Um, I, I I think in the next few hours of practice, whenever they may be. As long as I focus on these things, I think I'm going to see some some pretty solid improvement. And I'm not going to say overall lap time. I'm going to say more consistency, because I mean, really and truly, that's what we're shooting for in an endurance race, anyways. Is consistent lap times. They may not be the fastest in the world, but they are consistent, and you can count on them being there every time. Um, yeah, you don't want to be super slow and you know, I don't want to run 201s every single lap on the dot, uh, but you know what I'm saying when I when I say more consistency than outright just super duper qualifying speed. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, cool. Well, I appreciate your time, yeah, and you're uh, I look forward to uh, I look forward to giving you a full report and letting you see some lap times like uh, like I was posting after after our session in Daytona. Yeah, sure. Uh, can't wait to see the result. All right. Um, let me quickly finish the video. Cool. So, guys, um, that is what's going to be it for right now um, here from this session. So, um, Stan Donnan has improved already. So, we've not improved his consistency to a certain extent, as in, you know, getting the lines right, reminding himself where, where to, to hit the apexes and... Um, where to hit them lines, but uh, we've also 
by working on that, improved his overall speed, so his general pace. So he's really looking good, he's looking comfortable. Um, he has his moment of success, and uh, I'm going to share you his moment of success of Daytona tomorrow in a Patreon post. So um, I have some evidence from him, and he was uh, really fair and kind to uh, give all his data he then gathered. So we had a session, we had a slight improvement, I gave him the consultancy report, he kept working on it, and he came around with an improvement that just, yeah... Blow my blow my mind, and um, I'm gonna let you guys to have part on that, and see how this session we did at Daytona contributed his pace, contributed his competitiveness, contributed his consistency and his his joy um, in that regard. And I'll just hope for that this session right today gives him the very same effect. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in such ses sessions as well, um, feel free to contact me simracing at michi-hoyer.com you will find the email down in the description below and uh, yeah apart from that i just have to thank stan donnett on working with me again i thank you guys for having a watch at this and uh, hope to see you guys back soon on the streams there goodbye <laughs>